of July 28, 2019. See how I had to look at my notes, not once, but <laughs> twice to do that. Um, this thorough. is uh, episode 62 of the Dry Spellcast. Um, it's been roughly a month or more since we recorded an episode. We have been way on top of it. We're doing great. Um, I'm still in Florida. Surprise. So here we are trying to do this thing. Um, yeah, so I am joined by Austin. Hello. And then Austin, point point that way. Nope. And then, uh, nope, 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 the, no, you were right that way, yeah. Okay, okay. and uh, over there is Jason. Hey, where do I point <laughs> and, now? Like, point point uh, at yourself, Just Jason. point at yourself. There we go, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we're here, and we're going we're gonna to talk about some video games um, and stuff. Uh, it's fairly late where I am. It's like 11 o'clock, uh, which is why it is so dark. Uh, my room has no light. Uh, and yeah, there's no natural light coming in, so that's kind of why it looks the way it does. Um, I guess I might purchase some real lights eventually. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, you can't run it from the university anymore, so... <laughs> right. Yeah. The, good, the good old days, right? Renting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you come up and visit, just go stop by the university real quick, pick up a few things... Pick up a few things, take them on the plane with me. <laughs> well, several um, thousand dollars worth of equipment, yeah. Yeah, and also a lot of uh, cost checking it onto flights. Anyways, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, since it has been a month, let's just do our let's do our check in. Austin, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm. I think I talked about this last time, but I'm currently unemployed again we did we did talk that's about right this. I, was, I was freshly unemployed right yes and now i'm still on him <laughs> now i'm <laughs> two months unemployed so cool it's it's yeah. fine you know the usual <laughs> been doing right. some odd jobs here and there so surviving yeah yeah um cool uh you just went to montana for a weekend i did so yeah i left friday came back today actually so drove which is for us it's about an eight hour drive i think i did in just under eight but being by yourself it's just so kind of boring and tedious and yeah especially when i'm trying to listen to music like i have apple music and i hit a spot with no service and i'm like well silence it is (laughs) um and then your gps has no roads I can. I just didn't think about it because going up there, I went a different route and I had service the entire way. Uh, but coming back, I took a different way and went to the mountains. And I think honestly, eighty percent of my drive, I had no service. Sure. So, I mean, I get pockets here and there, and then it would it would download the album so I could listen to an album real <laughs> fast. Uh, but once that album was done, I couldn't like go to anything new and le- until I got more uh, service. So that was kind of annoying, but it. It was fine because it kind of broke up the drive a little bit better. So I could listen to music for maybe an hour or two and then kind of sit in silence for a little bit and then get more music going. So because just tedium is what kills you in driving. So mix it up. Be safe out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually this kind of public service always liked it. Austin. Yeah. So because well, I, I was my the drive today was just beautiful. I'm going I'm driving next to a river just mountains and uh, pine trees all on e- either side of me so I mean, at one point I rolled down my window and just, just took it all in it smelled so good just fresh and it rained too so like the, the, the scent and smell was just really really fresh so it was nice. not a bad drive it was definitely better going this way without the service than the, the driving through the uh, arid desert the other way so yeah that's true because eastern Idaho is not a beautiful part of the state. <laughs> no, it's a terrible drive. So, um, I, I, yeah, it was yeah. a better drive. Not a lot of traffic. Obviously, on a Tuesday, it wasn't too much. So, didn't have to, I actually made it pretty, I made it under eight hours. So, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's catching up to me. Just, I'll push, I'll persevere. I know it's not 11 o'clock gonna, for you. <laughs> yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so how about you, Jason? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm 
kind of in the same boat as Austin, you know, unemployed, but I still get paychecks, so I'm, o- I'm okay for right now. All right, you, you, get, you get paid for another month. Yeah. Or, so, yeah. got a few places I'm looking at, so once that goes through, it'll feel a little bit less stressful. some interviews, so best of luck yeah. to you there. Thank you. Sure. We're all ready yeah. for you. Fingers crossed. I have not been out of state for at least a month. But I have gone to Denver in California in the last two months, so yeah, I did some traveling. That's right, you kind of have been traveling around, so yeah, all of us are just seeing bright new horizons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine is really bright. It's almost too <laughs> bright. Um, it's been really hot uh, recently, and I think it's it only is supposed to get hotter. Oh. Man. Um, which I I don't understand how it's going to get hotter. Well, what's your but, temperature right now? Um, right now? Well, no, I mean, like, uh, yes. during the day. What was your, I got what a was new your high? Watch. Oh, nice. look at you! I got Rep. Um, yeah! Jason. Yeah! <laughs> well, mine's a circle, <laughs> which is actually one of the reasons I got the one I did, is because I like the circle design. But in the, So it is uh, 79 degrees right now, okay. um, which obviously is not that bad. Yeah, we're at 90, 93 at the moment, so and it's oh, the. 9 o'clock. <laughs> There's still daylight outside here, though, so. <laughs> yes, as you can tell from my lovely backdrop here, it is still light out. Yes, Idaho is still light at 9 o'clock. I guess it's yeah. low 90s. Um, What's your humidity, I guess, is the real question. Yeah, oh, dude. that's what kills it. That's what kills you. I mean, gosh, we're at we're hard highs 99 tomorrow, but our humidity is 18%, so it's, I mean, which is, I see, I mean, decent for Idaho. It's a dry heat. <laughs> yeah. Get you. I don't. I don't know how to use this thing yet. So. Um. All right. Well. Guess you're not testing that <laughs> out on live air. <laughs> I mean, so let's take least. about 20 minutes just so Matt can figure that out. Do you have the box? Can we we can put it back to the box? You can do a whole unboxing thing. That's yeah. Right. There we go. Those are, those are it really now popular. says 82 degrees. Actually, I do have the box, but the box was already in a pretty bad condition when I got it. Oh, so you can't do a pretty unboxing sequence? Yeah, no, it wasn't pretty when I got it. Um, the watch <laughs> is in mint condition. It was fine. The what kind box of watch it was in. did you get? It's Samsung, a Gear S2. Yeah, it's a Samsung oh. Gear S2. Um, okay. If I knew what I knew now, I probably wouldn't have gotten this one. Um, because, of course, after I get it, I'm like, oh, hey, what can what kind of apps can I put on this and stuff? And so I like start looking at like the apps that I can get and all this. Um, and it's pretty limited to things that like Samsung puts out. See, I figured it was like Google apps, but I guess Google has their mm. own smartwatch OS. Oh. Even though Samsung phones run a Google OS, right? They're still and a so, war. <laughs> yeah, and so um, the apps that you can get on it aren't great. Um, but I will say, uh, for getting like notifications, if your phone can get the notification, your watch can pretty much get it, even though that's, the app, the app yeah. isn't supported. Yeah, that's know? my favorite part about the watch, because just this weekend, like uh, one of the guys, like the people I was staying with, he was like, you got an Apple watch? I'm like, yeah, he's like, the guy, he's like, I think I want one. I want, I've been seeing Alexis wear hers and it looks pretty sweet. I'm like, yeah, the best part, honestly, is just the notifications. And like, so I don't have yeah, to yeah, totally. my phone keep pulling my phone out and i mean especially like when you're like you know i think the biggest Although, thing for me was when it's like winter time and i'm like you know you're in a coat and it's like maybe you're wearing gloves or something you don't want to keep pulling your phone out I, like that was like the one reason i like really wanted this because like <laughs> walking to school in winter time sucked it's just like <laughs> this last winter it was pretty nifty because you could just kind of like Whoop, oh i don't have to pull my phone out and i don't have to worry about taking my gloves off to text someone back so the one downside i can think of though is Whenever you're sitting there hanging out with a bunch of friends and you get a notification, you look real quick and they're like, am I boring you? And you're like, no. Yes. Well, I, just, I would do that with my phone anyways. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, but for some it, reason, people react a little differently when you keep looking at your watch. So okay, also, I think you're like, no, I got to get out of here. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I will also say, though, um, just being able to look at the time. Yes. Yeah, like you can't well, have watches. And, and now, yeah, like it's really watches. nice. So I, I was never a watch person either. And like, since I I've was. Gotten this, 
See, yeah, I wasn't. So, like, and since I got this, like, when I'm not wearing it, I'll, like, pull my arm up. I'm like, oh, crap, I don't have my watch on. But I'm so <laughs> used to, like, looking, because I have all these, I mean, I got the date, the temperature, the time on my, my watch face here. So Here's, here's my real watch oh. that I've had for, like, 10 years. All right. It charges itself by the sun. Yes. Um, R.I.P. Yeah. Uh, rip the sun? No. Yeah, the sun's watch. gone. Matt, you, you're experiencing this before us, so <laughs> I guess it's just gone. <laughs> we have, we have it, eight minutes of life left. I am in the I am the in the future. <laughs> exactly. In two hours, um, Austin and I don't get to see the sun anymore. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, um, it's nice. And also like being able to like use the timer and stuff. Um, I mean, those those are the main reasons I picked it up anyways. Um, but I do get like uh, like notifications that it's going to rain and stuff, which <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, happens just, yeah. a lot. <laughs> so anyways. we have had rain since 18. That's what it feels like, though. Uh, you guys had rain the other day. Yeah. I keep I getting, like, random downpours. I wasn't here, but I guess. I think I, it's um, been missing Boise for the most part, but. Well, I guess man. I've been here. I've been here since Friday, so. I it's actually yeah. just caused by the factory you live by, Jason. <laughs> oh, man. They're just putting out all that <laughs> rain cloud. All, all that vapor. <laughs> all that steam. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, speaking of steam. Um, oh, let's talk about sadly. some video games. Um, hey! uh, this has been your daily watch talk. Um, and so I guess I'll start off as I usually do with games that I've been playing. Um, so I, I went through a phase last week where um, my internet here went down. Um, we were without almost, internet for today. like... Yes, well. actually. So we were we were without internet for like three days, um, and actually today it went down again. Um, but about an hour before we were supposed to get together, it came back, which was nice, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, so I kind of like logged on and was like, well, what do I have downloaded that I can play? Austin Powers. Oh, um, I did. Sorry. I did watch. <laughs> uh, OK, so here. So I have some movies downloaded that I've had downloaded for a very long time uh, that I literally only pull up in the event that I don't have Internet and I just need to watch something. Um, well, Austin Powers are uh, the first three of them, because I think there's a fourth one, right? No, I think it's just three. Oh. Well, I think they're coming out with one or something anyways. So um, I loaded up the first Austin Powers um, or no, the second one, because I, I've watched the first one for this purpose before. I put on the second one and realized those movies are <laughs> shit. I mean, they are so bad. Dude, I've um, only I was... seen gold members, so I could not well, that's tell you. that's the worst that one. That? Yeah, I mean, I've never went back and watched it again, so obviously... I don't know. Special. I, there's a special place uh, in my heart for Austin Powers. I mean, Sure, and I, I feel like I might have that too, but probably only the first one. Like, I can watch one, the first the one first one's and good. think it is funny. It um, is. Um, the I second the second one, one was funny, but... The the second, like, Fat Bastard comes out, which, if you're going to name a character... In your show, <laughs> Fat Bastard, you should rethink the concept of your movie. <laughs> um, but anyways, like the second like he comes out, I'm just like, this has just gone off the rails. I didn't finish it. I thought it was like it was just so bad. Um, oh, so I'm not going to go watch the third one. I I should probably just delete those. Um <laughs> The one movie that I do recycle all the time when this happens is uh, the original Batman, like the like 67 or 69 version or something oh, like that. Like Adam, I've Adam never West? seen it. Mm hmm. The Adam West. You've never seen it? I never have. Like oh, you need to. <laughs> um, it is so funny. Yeah, I, it is so ridiculous. That's like the old style of comic book Batman, like when mm -hmm. everything was meant to be like happy go lucky and not dark and brooding. 
Christopher Nolan came in and uh, and just added uh, a lot of. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, yeah. So, no. Batman. I have an idea for ba- I have an idea for Batman. What is it? <laughs> we love it. Here's three movies. <laughs> Where is okay. He? What what pitch me your version of Batman? Uh, well, let me introduce you to Hans Zimmer, <laughs> and he will <laughs> he's going to play cluster chords at the bottom of the piano, um, and that's that is our pitch for Batman. Um, well, how, how's we Batman going to articulate being Batman? Where's the Joker? Fantastic. <laughs> Let's get a British a British guy to play him. All right, sounds good. Yeah, Just there kidding. we go. I think I think um, Christian Bale did a good job still. So. Uh, yeah, I actually, I think The Dark Knight is actually a really a really good trilogy. Um, anyways, I, I have them all right here. Oh well, look at you. Um, walk- that was a great display. Thank you for sharing <laughs> my uh, <laughs> entertainment system that you can't see. So. Um, yeah so uh games that i like had downloaded i like looked through um so like i played some cuphead um great game still yeah it is um and i played some of the witness um which like every time i go through my like my games list i look for things that like i can uninstall and get rid of um and i always like keep them installed because i'm like oh god i want to go back and play these and i just never do so i went back and um the problem was is so i tried one of the bosses in cuphead and barely made it like in like (laughs) the first five or ten seconds every time so i went back and restarted it um and i realized after i restarted it and kind of had the controls back in my hand i went through basically all of the bosses i had beaten up to that point um like that like with no problem because once you have the flow of the bosses down it really isn't that hard right Mm -hmm. um then it's just kind of like executing well um so yeah so i like yeah, it is like I won't <laughs> I won't discredit how hard that is. No, but I get, um, I get that. But learning it on the fly, I think, is more roll, difficult. Roll, right. Roll, 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 stab in the back. Roll, roll. Oh, that's dark. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dark that's souls. no, that's this is dash this way, dash this way, dash this way. Shoot three times, dash this way, dash do this a, way. <laughs> do a par- do a parry on the purple things. Yes. Yes. Get pink. your get your your pink things. Get your ability charged up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah so i was playing through that um and actually since then i've gone back and done some of the bosses um and stuff because like i realized that that game is a lot of fun i've beaten some of the bosses i haven't i hadn't beaten yet um and so every now and then like i'll like it's kind of starting to be my like go to all right i've got 10 minutes i'm gonna go in i'm gonna try this new level run and gun or do another boss or whatever Mm -hmm. um and it, it, I feel like that's working out a lot better than when the first time I tried to play it and I'm like, all right, I'm going to sit down for three hours and just work my way through. Um, and in a game like that, I, I just, I don't think that was the right way to go about it for me. So, um, yeah, uh, uh there's like a revitalized love for cuphead for me. Um, now, um, and then, yeah, the witness, Again, I this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've done this where I've gone back to it and just restarted the game because it's kind of the same thing. Like it's learning how the puzzles work and then just executing. Um, Yeah. And so like jumping into it cold with like six months in between, I've realized like, oh, like I don't remember how any of these work. So it's just best to restart the game and work my way through the stuff really quick that I like it comes back to me quicker and stuff and then move forward. And so I'm like, I'm kind of getting to a point in that game where like I'm experiencing new stuff, which is good. Um, It's still really hard, still really good. Um, I think it takes a certain amount of intellect that I'm not sure I have. So uh, I'm trying, but we'll see. We'll see how far I actually get. I really want to beat that game. Yeah. Matt was showing me some of the puzzles and it's always like you get to a certain point and you can do everything. And then suddenly it's like, okay, this one just makes zero sense. Yeah. 
and I've I've reached like several areas like that, and and there's there's just got to be like a key component that I'm missing, mm. um, like a lot of it is based on like angles and stuff. So like if you view a puzzle at one angle and then shift to another like viewing spot, you'll see something new. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, I'm like wondering if the stuff I'm getting stuck at has something to do with that, but they also limit where you can be when you're doing the puzzle. And so like, I don't know, um, there's just some, some sections that are really, really confusing me. Um, Wolfenstein two, I beat the other day. Uh, that has a damn good game. Um, and Austin, did you ever play the new Colossus? No, I actually never beat the uh, New Order. So you're kind it's, of like it's worth it. I beat it last night. I beat it last night. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think I got really. F I think out of all the Bethesda games that I've just not beat in recent the recent years, Dishonored Two, Doom, which I do need to go beat that. Um. Wolfenstein, I think I made it the farthest. Like, I literally think I'm pretty close to the end, and I just never... Because it was during that weird transition when all of us kind of moved more to a computer, and it's all on my console, and I just, like, don't boot up my console as often as I used to. And mm -hmm. that's where, I mean, that's where Doom's at, that's where Dishonored's at, and hell, sure. I mean, Red Dead and stuff still on there, and yeah. I beat that. So I need, to, I need to sit down, and maybe I'll do that the next couple of weeks before I actually get my life in order, uh, and beat these games. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, because you know, basically just everything it. you said, like, I would say you have to and complete. by the way, Dishonored 2 is $8 on Steam right now. And if you don't have not played that one, it's a great, great game. It's a good series. <laughs> yeah. If you played them. It's like, I mean, it's like a stealthy Doom or stealthy, more stealthy Wolfenstein style. Again. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jason just beat the new order, um, has started Colossus and has been working his way through uh, Youngblood. Um, yeah. So tell me, so obviously you really liked the new order's ending. Yes. Oh, man. I, I've obviously I'm not going to say anything to spoil it for Austin, but uh, right. Matt was in the channel with me and I just <laughs> at the end, I just kind of went silent. I'm just like. Did I just beat this? And because it's just it's so solemn. Everything's just kind of like, yeah, it just happens. And then you they know, just leave it. That's and, like the yep. ending of the, my reaction. I know I wasn't I wasn't here for this, but I'm like assuming right. how you're acting when I Matt was here for this one, when I did it, when I beat inside. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. a little different. I know, but it was like it's, it was kind of like a solemn like. Is, it, is the game over? Did I, did I beat it? What is the, what just happened? So, yeah, well, that was uh, I think that's a, a special circumstance in itself. <laughs> but no, I mean, uh, we've all kind of had those like experiences, right? I think I was in chat with you guys when I finished The Last of Us for the first time. Yes, um, I was. I remember that. And, oh, shit. Oh, my God. You're freaking out. Oh. <laughs> but like for the new Colossus, um, which is the second Wolfenstein, um, I I had to like mute everybody in discord and kind of like sit there and kind of like take in the moment because like the ending is so special to that game um and I, the first one um it is too like I, the both of those games end really strong and i'm like so excited for a third one yeah um, which i know they haven't really even talked about but you know they're gonna do right they've said they're definitely making a third one but that's like that's it yeah, I mean, you have to fight Hitler at some point, right? Um, right. You have to fight Mecha Hitler. That's just I mean, like obviously. part of the Doom thing. It would be like them the making, thing. or the Wolfenstein thing, because it would be like them making a Doom series and you're not fighting Satan. Yeah. Right? Like, it was just, they can't do that. Exactly. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, those games are really good. Um, so, your impressions on Youngblood. Um, drop them. Um, I like it so far. Like, the nice thing is now that I've finished the first one, I know my cat's over there doing something stupid. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on my screen, wondering what he's doing. 
Yeah, so good. Uh, <laughs> please, so far, please don't pick up and throw your cat. Um, uh, we have a new I mean, story I am already on this. my way to that. <laughs> um, so, young blood. <laughs> Uh, it's really interesting how they have it set up because it's all a, in a um, it has a central hub and you have to go there collect missions and then you go to the map and you select the missions and mm-hmm. so that's kind of interesting for Wolfenstein because it's all been just linear you go the hub just begins the next mission you don't choose which one you want to do next sure um but and isn't so that because it's like a co-op game? So maybe it's like a moment for you yeah. to like, to like, well, gather and, yourselves. Yeah, in and a way. I, yeah. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna ruin Wolfenstein Two by saying this, but there is mm-hmm. a little bit of that in that game. Okay. Um, uh, uh. <laughs> no, but <laughs> like, because, across the room. <laughs> uh, there's um, they're called Uber Commanders. Um, oh, okay. And as you collect uh, Enigma codes from the the officers that you kill right um, you can decode positions of different uber commanders um and you can go in and choose oh i want to go fight this one and plot my course to it um right. and then you go to that area um okay. and they all they all exist in the world that you've explored throughout the story right um but this is just a way to kind of go back and like do like little side yeah. missions in there well, yeah, this is isn't quite like that, but I can see where that kind of is the predecessor to mm-hmm. what this is doing. And the other interesting part about this is it's level based, which I'm not 100 percent sold on yet. I'm going to play through the whole game before. Like, are, are you really playing casting. with someone or are you yeah, playing by yourself? I'm playing with Jesse okay. Rayborn right now. I so I, okay, I just want to make sure that yeah. you were like doing with actual co-op versus like because if you AI. Yeah. is there is it AI if you play by yourself I'm assuming yeah or, okay. there is or you yeah, can choose the, to play with someone else yeah, yeah like and they're, they're, oh. they were Something. pretty out there in front of the game being like don't play this by yourself oh uh, and I can say it's it's been pretty fun um playing it with Jesse we, we've been uh figuring things out it's non-linear so it's taken some working around to figure out like what you're supposed to do at certain times. So uh, I like until I get to the end of that, I need to, I'm not going to pass any judgment. The level thing, I'm kind of worried about how it's going to affect the game though. I'll see how that goes. I feel yeah. like that'd be a nightmare to play with in that game. Cause like Austin, where are you? I'm just looking for everything. <laughs> Let me go. Well, good. Um, because I'm... I was going to talk to you about playing it. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I will be a great person to play that game with. <laughs> I mean, oh, what's nice, this. though, I forgot I mean, to mention this, and you guys will appreciate this. Um, if, for example, one of you buys it you, and you buy the deluxe edition, the other person can play for free. So mm-hmm. that's a really cool way to do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Austin's like, hey, Matt, I'm unemployed. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm loving the Wolfenstein series right now, and after I finish here, I'll probably go play some more. Hmm. I maybe maybe I'll uh, boot up New Order and see where I'm at with that game. And you should, uh, even yeah. Like so, and this is kind of what I recommended. I know I've said this before, but I recommended to Jason, and he didn't follow it um, because Jason played it on a hard difficulty. Literally, just bump it down to the easiest. Yeah, I feel like just a god. Go to town. Just go to town. See, like, cause I think I think I started at the hardest difficulty you can start at because you don't get the hardest one right away, right? Right. So you beat it for the first time. Uh, so absolutely. I think, or can I you? think in New Order you I don't, do? I don't uh, remember. But so so I went on the hard because you know easy, medium, hard, and I think there's like a very hard. So I did the hard one, and I mean I that's where I usually generally start games at because I like to have a little more of a challenge, but. But I've been doing all right with that at that difficulty. Once you get used to the game, yeah. it's not like it's a big deal. No, it's just you just like, have to be patient. Uh, but I like I be like off. being uh, smart around a battlefield versus like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and that's the thing. Like to be honest, like I've like I, one. I don't think that the combat is that satisfying. Um, but two, I don't think like 
necessarily and, like the mission design and like yeah. the way that like the enemies react and like all of that is rewarding. It's everything else about those games that I really, really love. Yeah, but just for me, the majority, I never have issues where I'm making a super big firefight because I'm usually stealthing like the entire way through a mission. So for the most yeah. part, so I never had those issues where like I never got to a spot I couldn't beat so far in that they game. They force you into some pretty tough fights. <laughs> Damn. I know Matt pretty... got to hear me on like the final fight. He was just laughing. Yeah, some pretty bomb uh, like boss fights. Oh man. Yeah, there are. <laughs> um yeah so cool um yeah i i want to play wolfenstein uh young blood uh but it might be a little while till i get there um but yeah again play this play the second two uh, or the first two i mean um and also i will mention i started bioshock remastered um for whatever reason i was just looking through like my library and i was like i keep on looking at bioshock and thinking eh, maybe i'll go back and play two and infinite because you've never played days. infinite right i've never played infinite. oh and i i mean i think i think i've said this before but i consider that one of the probably the best games i've played it's in oh yeah i, the top I think of my it, list. i don't think you're alone in that um it was just something that i missed at the time yeah um, and I, I ended up playing it a couple years after, too. Um, mm-hmm. But it actually, <laughs> crazy. Remember her? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh huh. She, yes, uh, she was super into that series. And she actually bought me uh, Infinite and I believe number two remastered as a gift for Valentine's Day. Oh. Or something. I don't know. And then she got mad That's when I wanted to play Infinite when I was trying to play it. I'm like, well. You bought it for me. <laughs> well, Valentine's, Wonder why we didn't last long. Valentine, Valentine's gifts are for us. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I just downloaded Bioshock Remastered. I'm playing through it. Um, the the only thing I have to say about it is, you know, like I'm going through it. Like I, I recognize a lot of the areas and stuff. I remember that game pretty well. Um, but I, this one has director's commentary. No. Um, and I started watching it. Jeff Keighley hosts it, of course. Um, and the directors are talking about the connection to like the world and Ayn Rand's worlds. Um, and then made the realization that Andrew Ryan and Ayn Rand are super similar names. And it blew my fucking 12 year old mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or 12 or 15 or whenever I play Bioshock, um, because I was like, oh my God, this changes this whole game for me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but anyways, so, uh, there's, there's that connection there. Um, uh, and then finally, I want to mention, uh, Sea of Solitude. I picked that up and played a few hours of it. Uh, it did not drag me in nearly as much as I was hoping it would. Um, I'm not really sure what about it I wasn't a super big fan of. Um, I just know that I really wasn't. Hmm. Um, it's something I want to like finish, uh, but I just don't know if if I'm going to take a bunch of time to do it. So if you don't know what this game is, basically this was like um, one of EA's uh, games that they're like, oh, we want to like put a bunch of money into an indie developer who pitches us a game. Um, And this was that. Uh, And the idea behind it is you are a... I'm going to say late teen girl um, who is in this weird kind of dream world uh, all alone. And the the premise of the game is that being lonely uh, can turn people into monsters. Um, And so you kind of have to fight loneliness. 
or at least prevent yourself from letting your own manifestation of the monster that is loneliness to take control over you. Um, and there, there's some other things to it. Like, uh, there's some other characters in the game that you encounter, um, some that are like actual physical human forms and some that aren't, uh, and like monster manifestations of people that are in your life, um, and things like that. Um, hmm. Yeah, which sounds like a super interesting concept uh, yeah. to me. Uh, and I I was hoping that this game would speak really well to me as somebody who just moved away from all of his friends and family um, to a new place where I don't know uh, anybody. Um, I don't spend time with anyone. Uh, really, the only time that I have human contact is when I... And playing video games with my friends that are 4,000 miles away. <laughs> uh, and so I was really hoping that this game would speak to me. Um, and I just don't know if it has um, at least a, a few hours into it. I'd say probably four or five at this point. Um, I like the art style a lot. Um, but I just I, I don't know about the gameplay yet. So that's kind of my thoughts on Sea of Solitude as of right now. Hmm. Again, it's it, like I said, it's one of those I want to finish um, just when I like sit down to like look at the games that I want to play. I just don't like it consider it like uh, it's not at the top of the list. Um, so it's going to be something that I'm going to have to force myself to play. Right. Um, so. Yeah, that's kind of Sea of Solitude for me. I still yeah, am interested looks, in that game, so when yeah, you beat it, uh, you should let me know. I will. Like as I said, the premise I like a lot. Right. Um, and, and it actually has kind of like sparked like uh, like something in me thinking about like the way that uh, like loneliness is portrayed in games. Yeah. Um, because for the most part, people just kind of shy away from it. You, you know, like for example let's take for like like red dead redemption um like in two you're arthur morgan and you spend the vast majority of your time by yourself right you're riding from place to place um you're camping by yourself you're doing all these things um but you're doing other things by yourself i mean that's why you pitch the tent (laughs) yeah oh god (laughs) um Gets a little yeah. out there on the plains. <laughs> but it, even with that, there, you're always kind of encountering someone, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, whether, because on that game, you're a stranger or, or you're going back to your camp your enough. And, yeah. Right. Um, uh, thinking about like uh, uh, The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. You obviously, there is some companionship in there, even if it's like forced and something you don't want it's still Mm -hmm. there um night in the woods um is like this struggle of trying to like realize who you are um and deal with those feelings while also realizing that like you have this support system in place Mm -hmm. um (laughs) And, you know, and and there's lots of things like this. Uh, And so just there's no game that really explores loneliness super well. Yeah. Um, And that's unfortunate because, like, there's those tough topics to tackle come up with the most interesting things. So, yeah. And I don't know. It's 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 a weird thing because, like exploring the idea of like social anxiety uh is Mm -hmm. is something that i think like a game could like tackle really super well right um but it just feels like no matter what it is it's always about you being with or doing stuff for other people i just yeah I just had the worst thought. I, I don't know if I even want to say it. <laughs> the game for social anxiety. A hundred 
a hundred people drop onto an island, and the first person to leave their building wins. <laughs> I think it's accurate. Lose. <laughs> uh, so, so actually, well, but that would actually okay. Well, minus a hundred people, that'd be the game to do social anxiety. It's like a beat a puzzle game, where you're trying to, you're honestly trying to get out of a building or out of your house. And the way you fantasize it in your head is, it's like you're locked in there, and you gotta unlock it, the potential inside you to get out of the. I don't know. They're write it down that's go. an idea See? <laughs> pitch a game over here is Hans Zimmer <laughs> right <laughs> that's and every time anxiety is coming up on you that's what you hear um, um, actually yeah, so, I, uh, that's yeah. just real quick I want to say uh, I'm going to do just a quick sidetrack just because I saw this today and I thought it was really interesting um, A24 put out a movie last year Bo Burnham the comedian he oh was I love director. Bo Burnham hilarious yeah uh, what's um, it 8th grade right yeah, and I was watching that, mm-hmm. and it, it really impressed me, man. Like, it deals with that social anxiety and I, stuff I heard like that. I that was a good movie. And, like, obviously it's an eighth grader, and, like, some moments are cringy because eighth grade is, like, really cringy and everything. But overall, yeah. it, it was, like, it was really well done, and it really tackled that subject pretty well, I feel like. Yeah. We're talking about no, eighth grade was, I, was was perfect. I wasn't small <laughs> and scrawny and <laughs> trying to figure out who you were. Eighth grade was terrible, but uh, yeah. So um, speaking of a hundred people, um, this is an aside. Uh, this is like a really bad segue. PUBG. Which are the best? <laughs> PUBG is a game. Um, it is a, a battle royale game that came out a couple of years ago. You may have heard of it. What's um, a what's a battle royale? <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Okay, uh, Google me, what is Fortnite. Let me Google. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so you, so PUBG has a new map. Um, Which one? Oh, I didn't know like that. a new and new one. I think so, but they also went through and like redid the first map. Yeah, I heard about that. I haven't played it yet, actually. I didn't realize they um, released a second, a new map. I knew they like I, redid. I've been meaning to talk to you because I want to go back and play this. Um, I'm in. But anyways, uh, so they did that, um, but also they released a trailer. They t- about well, oh uh, yeah, the, the actual just, story trailer to what PUBG is supposed to. Be so let's. Out. Oh, let's explain this trailer just for a short hot minute you, in is, case you can, haven't can seen you, this. Can you play it somehow and get it recorded on here? So um, we can just I like can, react. But also, no, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I was I the first wanna. one to survive. Uh, yeah. So basically it, the, the story of PUBG now is about a kid whose like town is like taken over well, by war. Well, who grew up in Erangal in Russia and apparently war destroyed it all and killed everyone. Um, and then just, he just be- Russian things, you know. Yeah, and then he becomes this weird, like, well, this psychotic, it's, like, warlord who then it's, it's brings back people to what we always fight. talked about with the the novel, the most dangerous game. Right. That's what he's doing now. <laughs> so he's the story trailer. It shows he's the first survivor of Erangal. But he won't be the right. last. So now he's, I don't know, if kidnapping people or something. But it shows him sitting behind 100 monitors uh, going, ha, 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 and watching everyone kill themselves. And, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, which and is funny because actually. KFC for him. So so the the timeline, the chronology of Battle Royale, it's a genre of anything, starts with probably the most dangerous game right essentially i mean it's it's man hunting man i think that was kind of like the really first big oh here i'll put it i'll put it right here okay and then right here is battle royale the movie the movie right which is basically that um and then we have uh whatever arma whatever that mod was did they do like a movie with like Another kind of battle royale style movie. Maybe it was just battle royale, but didn't they call oh, it like the Condemned or something? No, that was a, that was a game. Um, um, that's a game. But also, there was a movie. Um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to figure well, this out. But then there's death. Okay, and then Death Race. Remember that one with uh, 
It wasn't Jason Statham in that? Probably was. I don't know. Probably. Well, like the idea they're all prisoners and they got to build these cars and the last one to survive the race gets to walk out of prison, essentially. There is a movie that John Leguizamo Ooh. stars in called The Pest. Okay. Okay. Um, and so here's here's the Wikipedia like top uh, like paragraph. Fast talking Latino con artist Pistario Pest Vargas, who is played by John Leguizamo, is the target of Scottish mobsters to whom he owes a considerable debt. Willing to do anything to raise money and avoid severe injury or death, Vargas agrees to a very unusual job. He will be transported to a remote island and hunted by Gustav Schenk, played by Jeffrey Jones, a racist German executive. If he can survive a full day and night, Vargas gets $50,000 be set free well that's essentially Um, the most dangerous game kind of uh but I want to tell you something yes it's terrible (laughs) (laughs) I've I've only seen the first it's only I've only seen the first five minutes and I can't watch the rest like the premise is a really good idea but there was one but then then they hired John Leguizamo There's a battle royale movie with Stone Cold. I'm honestly, I like, I, maybe I'm just losing my mind, but I feel like. (laughs) Are you sure this wasn't just a really weird episode of Raw? (laughs) Let's see. I got this. Uh, But yeah, so them, them like trying to basically fill the turkey baster with a story. I'm, I was told this is a real thing. Shoving it into the rectum of what is known as PUBG and squirting said story (laughs) into there, um, is the stupidest thing they can do. Um, oh my God. I I think I know exactly. Your background got so unfocused. I, I totally remember that movie. Jack Conrad is awaiting the death penalty in a corrupt Central America prison. He is purchased by a wealthy television producer and taken to a desperate island where he must fight to the death against nine other condemned killers from all the corners of the world with freedom going to the sole survivor. (laughs) I am not crazy. It came out 2007 and it got a 6.1 on IMDb. So why why is it always like a rich like psychopath like or is it just because they're the only ones who can buy islands i mean maybe but yeah um anyways so yeah uh the, the them trying to inject a story into pubg is really stupid but did so uh i guess it's been probably over a month now or something they brought in one of the heads behind sledgehammer one of the guys who founded sledgehammer and uh brought him on to PUBG core to make a new game in the PUBG universe hmm. interesting yeah i didn't hear about that is. Yeah. Also, be your, battle camera royale is, your camera is out of focus now. I know. I saw that. that. <laughs> I, was, I was literally working on it right now. <laughs> My bad. Um, but oh. yeah, so I don't know. Like, did that work? No. Damn it. Maybe you're just a fuzzy person. Maybe you're just fuzzy today. Who knows? Just, oh. just get really close to the camera again, and then back up. <laughs> There you that go. That looks better already. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That that was I'm, the racking of focus you, it needed. <laughs> I hope you, hope you uh, guys enjoyed my close up face there. Thanks. Uh, you're just witnessing basically what happens for the first like 20 minutes when we log on until we start the podcast. So <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, lesson learned: Don't stick my phone into my camera's face. Uh, yes. Who I would have prove, guessed? I had to prove a point. So. <laughs> Um, so let's go ahead and move on from all of those things and talk about another game in the Battle Royale universe um, that is known as Apex Legends. Yeah. Oh, man. Austin, would you like to talk about this? I'll go for it. Um, so season two of Apex Legends started, I guess it's been several weeks now. It was like the first week in mm-hmm. July. So it's been about two months. 
uh, probably since we last we did our podcast. Uh, and I feel like with us and other people, we've been playing it pretty regularly. Honestly, there was a time where we were on quite a bit. So mm-hmm. uh, I am enjoying the game. See, like we're, we're I think we're all hitting a point where we're starting to get better and better every time. And yeah, I mean the big the biggest one was. Uh, Jesse Hill would be playing. He'd be like, oh, I hate Apex Legends. I don't play it because you guys are playing it, and it's kind of fun when we're all just together. But now he's texting me, hey, you want to play some Apex? You want to play some Apex? And I get on. He's like, he's like oh, I've already done like six games. I already won twice. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, and, and in I the think, middle of that, he's like, I hate PC gaming. Yeah, I know. Well, because his computer kept freezing. I think we figured yeah. it was the driver issue. I think that's what it was. I think so. I think I think we... Uh, we uh, he didn't realize he didn't know he had to upgrade his graphics card driver. So, sure, we're hoping that fixes it. Well, I don't think I haven't heard. Any, I mean, I guess I've been gone all weekend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a but, while since I played with him that it crashed yeah. mid game. So. so I know because I know we played. I played several games with him since, uh, and it worked uh, every time. So, uh, yeah, season two started and they kind of changed up a few things. So they kind of introduced the challenges and stuff at the end of season one last year, but they really took it a step further this time so you get three daily challenges that rotate every 24 hours um and then you get these weekly challenges that stay which i kind of appreciate because some of them will take longer than a week to complete it's just because sometimes just the nature of the beast you know getting four knockdowns in a certain location doesn't always happen especially if you kind of don't get good loot or you do just kind of suck like we do uh yeah uh so that's kind of nice i think we're on i think week seven just started uh recently since I got on today and played a couple of rounds with Jesse, so I think it was I think it's week seven now, and so those when you complete those, either they give you a battle pass level or they give you experience towards a battle pass level. And at first I was like, ah, I don't know if I like this because uh, I feel like I wasn't leveling up as quick, but I think now that I've played a couple of weeks in, I've level I'm leveling up my battle pass way quicker than I did last season. So I'm already at forty, and last season I think mm-hmm. I only made it to thirty two. So yeah. They and it's kind of it's kind of nice, I think, with uh, with these challenges. It's forcing you to play other characters that you don't normally would play as. I because mean, usually coming into this season, I was playing pretty much only Wraith and Pathfinder, and maybe a little bit of Bloodhound or Bangalore, just kind of whoever. But now I, I'm like I forced myself to play as Caustic and Mirage, who I am now loving Mirage, um, and just it kind of changes up the game from what you're used to. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. And it's kind of, and then if, like I said, it guides you towards, you know, oh, I gotta drop an air base and try to get a kill there. So it kind of stops everyone from dropping the skull town and kind of spreads out the map a little. <laughs> I think a little better because it's it hasn't yeah. been quite the overload in those hot drops as as we've seen in the past. So I think Apex is doing a good job. Uh, I mean, obviously they changed up the map a little bit with a little bit of destruction from the creatures. Uh, added some new locations and destroyed some old ones. So I'm curious to see where, I mean, obviously I think they're just going to stick with the Fortnite idea and just stick with the one map. And uh, is Matt sleeping? Yes. Oh, so. <laughs> so no, when I was you, listening. Okay, so when you talk for 20 minutes, it's okay. Okay. I'm listening. <laughs> just for my screen, just... it looks like you were just like, Awesome. He just, little, eyes, okay? oh, okay. <laughs> he just needed to rest his eyes. Oh, okay. He just needed to rest his eyes. Okay, sorry. I know. I know it's late for you, Matt. So we'll we'll wrap this up. Uh, but yeah, I think I think all of us have found success in season two of Apex Legends so far. I think I've got more wins in this last season than I've like had total in the game. Uh, I think I've more than doubled my wins, which is good. And my like I'm starting to get kills easier and. Mm-hmm. Just stuff like that because it's it was one of those games you kind of had to figure out a little bit i've been messing yeah. with my settings and uh i think i finally found a good mix for me I'm, i think you guys have kind of the same way mm-hmm. so. i definitely like i have noticed like i'm finally getting kills for the first mm-hmm. time in this whole game <laughs> yeah so and that was my thing because i played early on my first i mean honestly until like i keep saying until season two but it's been kind of where i've like really started taking off in this game i i think i've more than doubled my kills I had previously from season one and prior um, and with and damage I'm like get, get producing quite a bit more than I used to and stuff like that so and wins yeah so 
Yeah, I think that's all I kind of want to say about Apex. We, I'll just we'll be playing it. Maybe I'll start streaming again. I don't know. You want to see my pretty face some more? Only if you do that while you play. The whole time I'm just like, <laughs> enemy, enemy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I think that's all I'm gonna go there. Uh, speaking of another battle royale, I don't know if I talked Star about this New last Valley. time. Stardew Valley Battle Royale. <laughs> Hunter Farmers <laughs> drop a Noah. So I did try out Fallout 76 Battle Royale. And I have to say, for what it is, it's actually pretty fun. So it's it's completely different from where you would imagine um, like the other Battle Royale. So you actually get perk cards. And the more you play, you unlock more perk cards. And you're like in a slot a certain amount. So you actually can kind of go in with a more of a like a selected like how what you, like a what am I trying to say what you want to do um, I totally forgot the word I'm trying to it's like right here but I can't figure it out oh well oh, moving no. on S kind of a let out um, maybe like a strategy that's not the word I was trying to pick but we'll we'll go with that so which is kind of interesting and then in the world obviously so how it drops is you literally just pick a point on the map and it doesn't show where anyone, where anyone else picks and then you all just and then it just loads you to that spot, so you don't know if everyone picked there or they all spread around around uh, the other side of the map. So I was played with a friend of ours, Connor, and we jumped in a map, Slocum Joe's, you know, the good old diner, and of course someone else spawned there. And this is my first issue with the game. It doesn't matter if you're playing with one person or four people; it'll put you everyone in the same group, same game together. So I was playing with Connor, but we found this one guy who was by himself, and then which I think is a little unfair, obviously. So, I mean, in the first 10, 15 seconds of the game, I got a gun and I killed this guy, so I was pretty happy. Woo! Uh, <laughs> and then, so yeah, and then it's like works out. Yeah, I think you can hold like 12 items total, so guns, stim packs. Um, you can pick up armor, like the Fallout-style armor, and then you actually can pick up like craftable things so you can like build up. Uh, so they took a Fortnite approach and, I mean, there is a building aspect in Fallout 76, so they kind of took that into this, where you can like quickly build up a wall or something like that. So uh, it's kind of silly, but it's kind of fun because there are some like creatures that can run around too, so you can get loot that way or actually get killed by the environment. And I think the best part is the fire that comes in because it actually does everything it hits just does obl it obliterates the buildings and stuff, which is kind of a cool animation when you're running through a building that's just blowing up behind you by the fire. So. <laughs> It was it was kind of fun, and then of course ultimately we got killed by a squad of four who all had power armor on. So cool, classic. Yeah, and then on top of that, I actually have played a little bit of Fallout seventy six since they did their big last big update that added like the uh, I guess more of a hardcore server, this this sort of survival server more or less, um, which does bring something to the game that the game always should have had. Whereas if you die in the world, you can lose all your uh, it's just your junk and some caps and health and healing items and stuff. Like I got screwed over because the people I was playing with kept trying to kill people. And I think I lost like 60 stim packs in like five minutes. Cause we kept getting killed over and over Ouch. again, which sucked like big time. I was so mad about that because my character was pretty good. And then all of a sudden, like I lost all my healing sh stuff. I'm like, ah, stupid. But <laughs> it kind of gives a sense of like, at any moment, someone can kind of just start shooting you. Because you don't have to wait. Because how it originally was is, you know, you'd shoot someone, and they'd have to shoot you back to engage a fight, and then you would fight it out. This time, you can straight up just walk up to someone and kill them without them even realizing what happened. Which, so, like, it gives you more of, like, a sense of, like, yeah, I could die at any moment. It's like, I need to get my stuff put away or stuff like that. So, I, I like it a lot better and actually makes the game more fun. Because you can... I mean, you can't see everyone on the map, but you can see... No, oh, lost my screen there. Uh, you can see, like, the top three people in the server, and usually the top three people in the server are ones that hunt people, so you can see that they're coming closer to you, which they happened to I when I was playing with Justin. We saw, like, the number one guy, because I was number two, pinged, like, fast travel towards us, and we're like, ah! Ah! And then we, I managed to fast travel, though I can't put all my stuff away, and then we logged out of the game. <laughs> we were done, so... Uh, I'm curious to see, because I think come around soon, is there a big, big update with the new vaults and the NPCs and stuff like that. So we'll see. Uh, lastly, I've been playing a ton of Stardew Valley. 
Uh, I, I told you, man. I, I told you. I know. So I just I fun. texted. I texted Matt. I guess it's been about a month ago, because I was at my parents' house for a few days because I was helping them out there um, with some work around the house, and I only had my switch with me. I'm like, hey, Matt, should I buy Stardew Valley? And you're like, hell yeah, do it. Like, like just buy it. I can't explain how the game is. You like, you just have to play it. And gosh, I've been. I think I put in 80 hours so already in the game which is crazy, so I'm on my year, third year. Uh, great game, you know, fantastic on the Switch. It's always nice. So learning all the secrets. There's, that game is actually a lot deeper than, like, you think. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. Holy cow. So that's been, uh, <laughs> and I got my girlfriend playing it now, so she – she likes it too, as much as she won't admit it. But I would catch her just like, like walking in the room and she's playing it up the Switch. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah, that, that's that's <laughs> about my life right now. <laughs> I played some Modern Warfare with my brother, and that's a, so. Game still sucks, but it's still good at the same time. So. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's a pretty good description of most Call of Duty games. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh jason uh so you've got rocket league on the list i do because i've just fallen back into a few competitive games lately uh yeah way back i used to play call uh now you gotta be trying to say call of duty i used to play rocket league <laughs> with austin and matt and yeah, I'll play well, a little bit matt someone else but rocket matt a little bit <laughs> And Matt one of our other friends played it. And fall to the ground and get stuck in the floor somehow and be upside down. I think he got out of the map before, which I was one we, of the most amazing moments. And it's also when you had terrible, had terrible this. internet. So your ping would be like 6,000 and your car would be like, deep, 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 deep. I am pretty sure we had this discussion last time. I think yeah. so, but it's still, it's still funny. Yeah. No, I am really getting back into it. Um, I put. Oh, man, I think I'm over 200 hours since I got it on PC and uh, level over 300 now, I want to say. Well, they, level 300. they change the leveling so it actually goes quicker. Yeah, because uh, but it still takes a little still. time. I remember yeah. being stuck at like level 29 right. for like six months on the PlayStation. Yeah. And then when I played with you and Jesse, cross-played it, I think I went up like four levels in just like a handful Something of like games. That. So I'm like, oh, this is, goes quicker. But it's been super fun. I mean, I play with uh, either my friend Jesse, who's about my level, or we have two friends, uh, Tommy and Eric, who are champ two right now, which is like two ranks away from the top rank. So that's a lot of fun because I said they're like, I hit the ball and they're like, cool, I just went off the ceiling, just scored. And I'm just like, fine. <laughs> stop breaking the rules but it's been so much fun to get back into it actually climbing learning new mechanics and stuff like that it's it's fun to have a game that's so mechanic based that they can just come up with something new and realize like well this is just a new move you can do and it's just like not programmed into the game to be a specific thing but rather something people find out oh because the game works like this i can do this and that's just mm -hmm. such a cool little feature for me. Um, so I've been playing it a lot. I up to plat two in standard. One of our friends got banned, so we had to take a break from standard for a while. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, I we were getting on. Me and Jesse were getting on, and I got a message from him. He's just like, "Dude, I got banned for seven days." <laughs> Why did you? It get was banned? pretty great. I I guess he gets a little toxic. Uh, oh, usually no. he's pretty good with us when oh. it's me, Jesse, and him. But when he plays by himself, I guess he gets a little toxic. <laughs> Jesse Rayborn gets. Actually, I can see that because. <laughs> well, it's not it, Jesse. It's not Jesse. Banned. Jesse's not banned. Wait, who got banned? Uh, one of our, uh, the other Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, I know uh, Jesse Rayborn could kind of get a little. He doesn't get toxic no, per se, but that. but he can get no. he can get pretty snarky. I think so. <laughs> he just questions anyway, like it's, it's the funniest thing. I'll just hear okay. typing and I'm just like, oh, Jesse's questioning if there's a Smurf. <laughs> he that's okay. the main thing the, he does. The other Austin. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, my mainstay is Overwatch. I mean, I can't get away from it. You guys obviously have, but. 
for me, yes, it's just it is a great game. Because <laughs> I, I, I jumped on I jumped on Discord a couple weeks ago, maybe, and Matt was I was, saw he was playing Overwatch. I'm like, really? And I think I jumped in, and Matt just like sc- already screaming, <laughs> and saying how stupid this game is. I was like, eh, it's kind of yeah. Well, it so, was fu- um... it was fun. <laughs> And then it wasn't fun anymore. I'm going to stop you right here because you guys are both wrong. San Francisco (laughs) Shock. I'm repping Overwatch right now. So, man, I uh, really like it. There's new. The shirt I've had for like eight years and it still fits. Plain plain black. Yes. (laughs) Probably (laughs) Hanes. But um, new heroes coming out, Rolox coming out, stuff like that. It's got me more Mm -hmm. excited. I've been watching Overwatch League. Shanghai Dragons took their first uh, stage championship, which was exciting for them. Oh gosh, got too only problem, <laughs> only problem was it came over my team, so that was upsetting. But yes. good for them. So I guess we can we can move on to news with this um, and talk a little bit about because I did throw on some Overwatch news. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, um, I, there's been one of the things about the last time I hopped in and played was I was like, OK, this is a new map. I didn't know there was a new map. Oh, yeah. This is a new character. What the fuck is this? Well, there like three, like three new characters since you played uh, yeah, last. There was there was a couple. Um, yeah, I think I think the last character that like they introduced when I was playing was Ash. Right. See, I think I stopped um, playing right before Brigitte came out. Oh, because I was going to play. Because I was going. I was going to keep playing, um, and then I heard that she ruined the game. And I was like, ah. she, she ruined the game, <laughs> and then they fixed it, and then uh, not yeah, no, Sombra ruined the game, um, and still has. So that's cool. But anyways, so um, yeah, so uh, they introduced the their next new character because Quake Con. Mm-hmm was i think last week um or not that wrong game right wrong game city <laughs> blizzcon was I, I don't last think it's happened month. yet has it i thought that this was announced during blizzcon no november 1st and they we guess they just dropped to this yeah um so um where did i put this oh yeah so <laughs> they introduced this new character um sigma Fun uh, fact, which has, his cousin's name is Ligma. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's a meme that I actually don't get or know. So I'm just going to move past it. Um, <laughs> L- Ligma balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you never heard that? You say it's Ligma. What's Ligma? Ligma balls. No, I haven't. It's kind of like the, the old up dog trick. Yeah, it's, it's what's up dog. Nothing much. What's up with you? Yeah. Or what are you I eating down there? What are you eating under there? Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. You never so, heard uh, the Ligma thing? No. Oh, well, there you go. Um, so again. Sigma, he is a mad <laughs> astrophysicist. Um, the intro trailer was kind of neat. Um, go check it out. Watch it. Like, I actually really liked it. Um, I want to say something about that before you move on to him. I watch a little bit about that and they only had four pictures of Sigma and they created that whole video from four different pictures, which was sure. awesome in my opinion. Yeah, I think the, the announcement was really good um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then there was controversy. OK, <laughs> and of course there was. But here. So um, in the trailers, he's barefoot. Which which was fine, whatever. Like, I don't know who would be going into battle with bare feet, even if you're like floating or whatever. Um, that doesn't really make sense. But um, some people seemed to question why that would be. And so finally, an artist um, that worked on the character came out and kind of responded to it. Um, and this is a quote directly from them. Uh, quote, thanks for your feedbacks. We decided to keep the feet bare to sell the, quote, asylum look a bit more. In many institutions, patients are not allowed to have shoes because they might cause harm with the laces. While Sigma isn't necessarily in danger of that, we felt that having no shoes helped draw that connection. I also had iterations of him with shoes on, and it made him a lot more generic. So in the end, we decided to leave him bare feet. 
That's just what the reasoning internally was, though. I'm sure we'll be making skins with shoes on him in the future. So let's digest this for a minute. <laughs> um, if you want to make your character barefoot, um, go for it. Yeah. Um, if you want it to be because you want it to draw like a like asylum connection. Sure, do it. Um, don't say it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that's better or worse, but from a PR standpoint, I would probably advise my client to not. Yeah, um, I, I agree. With you. It's if, just kind of a weird. It was if, just like a weird statement. Like, like if like, you're hey, barefoot, you know, deal with it. Because he's fucking crazy. Like yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna deal with mental health issues in a game, mm-hmm. that's not the way to do it. Definitely, you get in that's a game a where the whole goal is to unlock yourself out of the room. To I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it, but like, let's like look at like. So when let's say Ninja Theory wanted to include a mental health issue in their game. They literally brought somebody on who understands mental health Mm -hmm. um, and so on and so forth. Um, But making it like this is like kind of an accessory to your player, because from what I understood on the trailer is that he may have gone, um, I want to say mad due to his work with Adams. OK, yeah, um, maybe like a black hole or something like that. That makes sense. OK, but to then say that he is in a asylum level of quote unquote crazy is just way too far. Yeah, um, that's just like that's just. It's almost offensive, and I think a lot of people did take offense to it. Uh, yeah. Um, well, there's like that stereotype. A, a lot of people, you don't mm-hmm. really say crazy anymore because it has a certain connotation to it. Right. I mean, to just sit there and be like, well, we wanted him to look like he was in an asylum. That's just like. No, that's a, weird, certain, it's a weird. It's like it's a weird. Odd. It's like it's like the weird line where you don't really cross. Like, yeah. Like if you so yeah. know if someone's like supposed to be institutionalized, you're like, hey, institutionalize that person. You go like, hey, right. you, like that person might need some help, you know? Yeah, right. Um, and I mean, mad scientist is one thing. Cause, but I mean, we've been um, seeing the mad scientist thing for a long time, you know? Sure. And but, that totally. But, but like, like, now they're, a, they're, they're a actually asylum, taking they're actually taking asylum mad patient and taking it like a step like he's actually yeah. mad and not like right. Just like like uh-huh. mad sign. Mad scientist is over here. Asylum patient is over here. Um, and th- those are two very different things. Yeah. Um, and very different tropes and thing. And so I don't know, like this was a. This was not, not their a best choice. brilliant move by Blizzard. Uh, and frankly, like with Overwatch, they've been doing like really super well in terms of like inclusivity and like like making their characters unnecessarily human and like all yeah. of these things. Uh, but um, this just felt so out of character and so tone deaf. Yeah. Uh, which I was really shocked about. So... Um, so yeah, uh, let's go to the new story. Um, let's talk about the Nintendo switch. Yes, let's. All right. Um, let's do that. So, um, Nintendo announced a new switch known as the Nintendo switch Lite. Um, and so basically this is a, um, all handheld version of the switch so you can't dock it the joy cons don't detach Mm -hmm. um it's basically a playstation vita yeah it's it's Um, basically or a psp uh, like a nintendo uh hold on yes give me like one (laughs) second 
Oh, you have the Game Boy Advance or no? <laughs> yeah. Game Boy Advance. It is essentially a new Game Boy Advance <laughs> with the touch screen. So, yes. And two um, more buttons. And probably on the a side. little more powerful. No, no. <laughs> actually, you know what's funny? Is this this actually still has one of the best battery lives of any Nintendo console? Handheld console. Why consoles. do you have a game in it? What what game is in your Advance? It looks like Pokemon. Pokemon Red. I, oh, okay. Because I play it with uh, <sighs> with this guy, which has Pokemon Blue, and then I have <laughs> Yellow here, so I trade back and forth, so I have all the Pokemon. My uh, my Game my Boys are, <laughs> my are are actually didn't come with me. Um, but they are back home. Um, but anyways, so yeah, so um, it, it's basically just that, right? It, it's it's a yeah. portable switch that you don't hook into the. So exactly for me, right? Um, because I don't ever dock my switch. I think my switch has been docked twice. I See? played Mario Party once and then Mario Kart once. Yeah, again, and that, that was is and one entirety. of the Mario Party was for our uh, Extra Life event, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I uh, just don't play it that way. When I saw this announcement, I instantly thought of you because of that reason. Because uh, I know you've only really ever played in the handheld version. And. See, I love the Switch for the fact that I like can take it and put it on a TV elsewhere. I've done that with mm -hmm. uh, at a party already. I know I'm looking like the commercial on that freaking Switch game. But I, you know, <laughs> I was like, it was after my sister's uh, bridal shower, and my whole family's there, and we're all so it's like bridal shower's over. Now we're all kind of just partying. I'm like, you guys want to play some burial cart? And lo and behold, I plug it in my parents' TV and give everyone a Joy-Con, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, and so um, uh, basically it is. It is for somebody like me. The thing is, is like me, like I want the option, right? See, um, I, I, I be think it'd be perfect it. for like a young kid. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's where they're marketing. It's obviously smaller, so it's easier to probably be held with smaller hands. Uh, mm -hmm. It's quite a bit smaller, too. I, I know I sent Jason a picture of it when they announced it. And right. I think they said it's like 30% smaller which is quite a big difference yeah it was pretty substantial yeah. so and i because i that's how i see it is um younger for younger kids because you know you got to keep in mind they probably don't have access to a tv constantly so it might make more sense just sure. to have a total handheld version and especially with younger kids joy cons can get broken easy if they take them on and off versus if it's all one unit that, that's that's sure. my only like and then people yeah. like matt who just play in their bed and don't do anything else with else with it besides playing the bed or if they're at work and you got some off time and you know pull it out of your briefcase or something yeah. your, sat, your satchel so your satchel <laughs> your handbag um but yeah so um they announced this uh and then uh it was rumors started kind of flowing around that they might be upgrading the switch, which I think they've um, kind of come out and said since. Well, so hold on. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not done Go yet. OK, so rumors started swirling around about this. Um, and then it was pretty much confirmed that this was happening. Um, the switch was getting a um, the battery life was going to be longer. Uh, I believe like a, the like CPU was getting. Yeah, like the CPU was getting a little bit of an upgrade. Um, and when we say battery longer, we mean like actually substantially, like because, almost twice as long. Because I think the switch yeah. now was they say it's two and a half to six hours. The switch light was um, I think they said three to three to seven, what, something like that. Yeah, so like, like a it half was, hour at each would end. Would have been something. like a yeah, like maybe half an hour each end. I think this one was like max nine hours, and I think the minimum was like or like at six or five even. So it's quite a bit more beefy on the battery life. Yeah. So so the the thing was is coming out about this. Um, they're not calling it anything different. Just the it's Nintendo the Switch. Nintendo Switch. 
It's so, just the new version. Well, it's like it's like if how you, every console does. Like they'll re do a sure. new PS4, and it looks different, but it's still called the PlayStation 4, or the Xbox One. Well, that's One. the thing. These don't look different. Oh, uh, okay. So they're going to be selling two different consoles with two different power, um, two different battery lives for the same price with the same name. I, I can see these being the more expensive. weird. Well, um, okay. Or I can see the current Switch models dropping down like 50 bucks or something. I, I actually don't see that. Um, just from what I know about Nintendo, it, I then, honestly don't see that. I can't see them. I can't. I can't either. I can't see them putting two, two products where one is obviously better than the other one at the same price point. That makes no sense. Otherwise, you keep the Switch where it's at and give this one for fifty more dollars, or you drop the Switch fifty bucks and put this at the two ninety nine. So, I've never known them to be that type of underhanded. Like they do weird things, but I don't think Nintendo's that dumb. Uh, I do, um, <laughs> but uh, also, so if you go to their website that shows the specs of these consoles, it just randomly appeared uh, this second model um, and just said on there, look for the model number, blah, 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 blah. OK. Um, for us, if we were going to go buy a switch, we could look at that model number and we would know exactly what we're getting, right? Think about grandma. Yeah, exactly. Is she going to know what model to get? Or even mom or dad, like. Right. Unless unless they specific like have a literally written thing to give the employee like model number. They're just going to say I need Nintendo Switch and they'll grab whatever one's there. So, yeah, I mean, they could prove me wrong. They can drop the price of the the initial switch. Um, I just I just can't I just see don't them really see that happening. I can't see them not doing that, though. Like it, it would make no sense to me. See, it would no, make no sense to me. All right, but... unless, they, unless they call it like, the <laughs> switch plus or something like that. Which you never know. I'm looking at the articles right now, and the only thing I see is the box is different. So I don't know. OK, well, at least we got oh. the box is different. Available starting mid-August. So they haven't actually released oh, they're yet. Not out yet. No. Yeah. So I'm imagining probably... when it actually does come out, that's when you're hey. going to see the change. Hey, folks, it's uh, August in two days. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. And for Matt, it's August in one day. <laughs> 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 um anyways so there's a new switch out there there's a new model of the regular switch um for all of your switch needs it is funny that they pulled out literally the like they named the switch because of that right yeah yeah because it's like it's like they had like a you know the holding the 3ds like gosh i feel like this was an okay console what would have made it better well you know Maybe if it was something you could like switch it to the <laughs> and then and now the second. Nintendo's like, all right, we got the switch. What could? What if we just make it like a th the Wii U? <laughs> so we have all of these Wii U parts. Just we hear me out. <laughs> just hear me out. We have all these extra Wii U's that we can repurpose. Speaking of Nintendo, so okay. I so I I uh, saw this and I I haven't experienced it myself. I don't know if you guys have about the Joy-Con the Joy-Con drift. Oh uh, yes, I I almost missed this because somebody messed up my uh my formatting. It was probably me. Yeah. Um, so, I didn't even touch this uh, part, so it was definitely you. Uh, Nintendo. Uh, some time ago. Um. The class action lawsuit was filed against Nintendo um, on account of failing Joy-Cons. Um, and one of the big issues is the Joy-Con drift. Uh, 
um, which is basically, uh, I mean, I'd have you'd have to pop open the Joy-Con, which I'm not going to do to see why. But I imagine it has something to do with a loose solder or something. Um, basically, the register of your your Joy-Con um, just starts to pick up movement and stuff when you're not actually moving it. OK, um, you can send it back to Nintendo uh, and they will fix it, uh, but they will charge you to fix it. Or you can go out and buy a brand new single Joy-Con because you can buy single Joy-Cons. Joy-Con R or Joy-Con L. Wait, can you can you actually? Yes, yeah. you can. OK, I didn't know that. OK. For fifty dollars, I might add. That's so expensive because you can buy two for what? Eighty? I think they're eighty bucks. Something like that. Yeah. A little expensive. Or you could you could buy one of both for the same price. <laughs> or you could buy two L's for the price of one pair. I don't know. But That's anyways. more. Not fifty so, would be a hundred. No, too much. <laughs> So, um, I thought you could send it in for free. Uh, no, no, hold on. I'm getting there. Oh my god, you're jumping my gun here. Get off my dog. Um, so this uh lawsuit was filed, um, for more than 5,500 users, um, which is a pretty good size class action lawsuit. Um, and the most recent report is that got leaked, um, is that they are deciding to, uh, fix them for free. But again, that's leaked. It hasn't been confirmed. Nintendo, when pressed on the issue is like, oh, hey, we know there's a problem. We're looking into it. That's it. Yeah, they they've kind of been they've been dragging their feet on this this has been going on since like month two or three people have started to notice it so, so. it must be like er, i'm assuming earlier models of switches then maybe but i guess jason you bought yours right out of the gate too so i don't maybe not yeah it might just be it, i think it's just kind of just a crap shoot then at that point i think mm -hmm. i heard 20 percent of users are experiencing it or something like that i can't say if that's the right statistic i read something along those lines recently so yeah. So just anyways, unlucky people. Uh, yeah. And so there there's this major issue. And so like um major issue. every time I hear about this, like my like uh my thought like my thought process always kind of goes to like the red ring of death. Right. Um because Microsoft had to make that decision, right? Like yeah. um it's either go under or fix all of these for free on our on our own money. Um, and obviously for them, fixing them for free was the right call and it worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is like this. I don't think this is a quite the same scale because the next box 360 was three hundred dollars and these are, you know, 80. But it's still it's not insignificant. But you got to keep in right. mind that it might be someone who they only have the two joy cons and one's not sure. working. They can't play the switch. So it's almost the $300 console in and of itself is, is useless. Mm -hmm. So unless they play with one joy con, because that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the other thing is, is like, so c controllers go bad. I mean, I've had to replace my PlayStation controller. Oh, I've gosh, replaced I, Xbox I've controllers. Have... You know, it happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I have my original here, but it's. Oh, uh, like, I can't like use mine anymore. Tearing. And then I. So I stopped. I actually only use these when I like watch Netflix or something now. So I don't use the battery on my other ones. But the battery life does not last long anymore. And I noticed when I was playing De the first Destiny that my trigger wouldn't work all the time. Yeah. For, for certain mean, guns. That, but, but then that, that's why. That's kind of stuff. That kind of. Yeah. Nice upgraded models now, so that kind of that just that just happens with controllers. Um, that's yeah. to be expected. Um, but so soon. But when, the, like, I expect well, your controller to last 
the better part of maybe a year or two even so exactly well and also when one of those controllers is worth the same as half of the of a controller which is crazy yeah, to i mean me. yeah like it's it's pretty insane mm-hmm. so yeah so if your joy con's drifting that's get on get in on that lawsuit um who knows maybe in 10 years you'll get like 20 dollars or something right Let's fix the joy cons oh, sorry excuse me nintendo you got Relax. enough money where you could actually sit down and make and fix the joy cons um and solve this problem before it you know gets worse uh do you want to talk about gta online i mean i can i haven't played it all but i've want to so gta online uh released another expansion which people really didn't see coming because they kind of thought that the uh, nightclub was going to be the last thing that we saw in that game because that's what came right before red dead and we kind of figured their focus would be going to red dead online uh surprise surprise they released a casino expansion uh so the casino has been there this entire time just haven't been able to access it unused yeah it just hasn't been able just been accessed which i'm sure all the buildings in gta could be unlocked at some point in time i'm sure and you know they set the build um right the stuff for the inside and just do an animation to go through the door so they released a casino i'm assuming you buy a casino and make money i haven't really i want to get into right. it because i love playing gta online i haven't played in several months now so if um, i understand right I, there's a whole uh storyline that goes along with yeah, it too it's not just like and a lot of new stuff that you can get um the rarest car is now there's like a super rare card that has a 0.05 percent chance of winning in one of your yeah. in one of the casino games uh and apparently people are just having a ton of fun literally just losing millions of dollars betting on like they you know put all their money on 33 black or something and they they, they lose and they, <laughs> they're like Woo! <laughs> I uh, I actually saw an ad for this last night um, before uh, seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought was really strange. But um, yeah, so basically from what I gathered from the, the ad was that like uh, you can you can work for the guy who owns um, the casino um, yeah. and just do jobs for him. Um, and there's like a rival who wants to buy him out. And so I'm sure you go to like fight the rival and blah, blah, blah. And GTA I'm sh- stuff. I'm sure it's fun. I mean, there's not much in GTA online that wasn't fun, especially those big expansions like that. So, and it definitely adds a lot. I mean, there's a ton of stuff to do on GTA online. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I keep thinking maybe someday I'll play it. See, I, I just I know you guys month, several, several months ago brought up getting it on the computer. And I don't know if you guys, some of you guys did or not. I just won't because I think I just have right. so much on the PS4 that I'm like, I'm not yeah. going to start over. I'm not going to get to level such and such and get enough money to buy a house and do the do the heists again yeah Um, because that's that is a long like that first part of gt online to get to that point to make serious money is a really hard grind unless you play snipers and stunters for 20 hours which i got sick of which we did and (laughs) yeah it 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 almost kind of killed the game for me originally on because we oh my gosh oh i know trying to grind out that money as fast as possible is really hard matt you weren't around for that whole section but whenever we would jump onto gta online like i would be like let's go do something like a heist or something grant grant was playing with us this time and he'd be like we're not gonna get enough money from the heist let's do snipers and stunters so and we did that a lot when i because they got it (laughs) before i did on ps4 so when i picked it up i they were already ahead of me and i had to get to that level where i could do a heist so we kept doing the snipers versus stunters and the premise of it was there you're floating on these shipping crates and one team's up there with snipers and then the rest of the people are on the ground in cars and there's three ramps on each side and you literally drive up the ramp and try to knock the people off the shipping crates to kill them or the people up top try to snipe the drivers out of the cars and the last team standing wins. Uh, it's fun. It was fun for, for a point 
in forever for it w- until like until people like really figured it out where they could actually like land their car on top of the shipping crates and just run everyone over in five seconds that's not yeah. as fun but it was a game that gave you like twenty thousand dollars if you got if you if your team won so like it added up really fast because you need like a you need at least a hundred thousand dollars to buy the uh the uh, the minimum level apartment to do the heist you got to be a certain level so it gave you enough experience to level up but it was such a mm-hmm. long and just like kind of yeah. grueling and unfun thing hmm. yeah well that's that's not a great review <laughs> <laughs> that kills any interest matt had in gta i'm like yeah, i wanted to say i'm just saying my whole point is like i don't want to start over again on 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 computer i just i'm just not gonna right. do it um a couple games you maybe be able to convince me to to jump over, but GTA is one that I will not do because yeah. I'm not going to go go through that again. Considering <laughs> I'm level 100 plus in the PlayStation, I'm not going right. to try. Cool. But if you get, a, if you get it on um, PlayStation, I'll help you out, you know? Yeah, I doubt can, that's going to happen. You can sell some drugs with me, and uh, we'll make a lot of money that way. I have a cocaine lab. I have a meth lab. I have a weed farm. I have. A well, hey, Matt's got meth gators, so yes, got I've meat. got meth gators, that's so I'm sure. already ready. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so Doom, Doom Two, and Doom Three got a re-release. It just randomly dropped the other day. Uh, yeah. they weren't like remasters or anything, right? I kind of just missed this. It's just the original versions just got re-released, or. I think so. I think we're losing Matt. Matt's internet looks like it's freaking out a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, I hear your voice just fine. Your audio's fine. Your video. Okay, well, that's all that matters. So, yeah, it'll look fine on his end, so we're good. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) All right. I was kind of interested just because, like, Doom, the original Doom, I remember, was, like, my first online game. I put it on my computer, jumped on, and I would just play against people. It's probably the game that has it was the most influential to the games we're playing today. I mean, it's the original Absolutely. first person shooter. It's that original idea that st- kind of started it all. So it's a big it's a big deal. Like the original Doom. Absolutely. And, and then Doom Two and Doom Three and Doom Sixty Four. Even we're we're all yeah. pretty, which is part of this re release, right? I I think it is. I don't think Doom Sixty Four. I but saw. Doom 3. I saw that Doom Sixty Four was mentioned in something. So I isn't could... Doom Sixty Four just Doom? I don't know. But yeah, uh, Doom. Yeah, it, it's just regular Doom, I believe. So it's yeah. not like a remaster um, or something, or a remake. Uh, yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think so. A remake would have been like. Oh, it is a sequel. It's a sequel to taking place after Doom Two. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, well, let's hear. I'm gonna look at this guy over here. It's like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's a good. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a sexy chest. <laughs> oh, um, oh, hey, there he's we back. Are. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so I also heard there was like some kind of gross, um like Bethesda sign in stuff with these games you had to like sign into your like Bethesda account, but you had to be online to play the games you bought and stuff. So like even on the switch, you have to like be online to play these games. And I think they've come out since it like dropped and we're like, Oh, we're fixing this. This won't happen. They better. They better. Yeah, I know I was annoyed was because yeah, I, these are actually be kind of fun to play on the switch. Cause yeah, sure. I know I was pretty annoyed when I, uh, uploaded when I booted into Wolfenstein Youngblood because yeah. I bought it on steam and like, I'm getting ready to play and everything. Yeah, I get the multiplayer Bethesda. and yeah. And so I have to spend however long finding out my username uh, and everything see, like that. See, this is in, I, I think this is what, uh, jesse hill's upset this is the most frustrating thing of pc gaming why can't it no it's the most frustrating thing about gaming they do that on ps4 now yeah xbox and everything really pisses me off i had a uplay account long before i ever played uplay on computers yeah yeah i guess i I I mean i guess i had one i I guess i technically have, have had a uplay account since like the days of like the original assassin's creed but that was yeah. the old mm-hmm. you play accounts where you would link it and then it would just kind of 
you have to, would have to go to the web page through your computer to look at your achievements. Now it's yeah. all you know integrated and all that bullshit. Yeah. And I mean, I had a Bungie account, but that's because uh, I kept up to date on my Bungie profile, and I was on the forums and message boards and things about Halo yeah. as it was coming out. And, <laughs> Posting your best kill streaks all by text because we couldn't record video. And, <laughs> uh, good, good old days. No. Wow, we've really fucked things up, haven't we? <laughs> I just got really annoyed having to do all that stuff because, like, you're sitting there. It's one thing if you buy it on Bethesda Net, then yeah, use your launcher. But See, that, that's, when that's, I'm playing, hang on, hang oh, on. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm trying to play on Steam, like I'm sitting there, like I want to invite someone. Steam's multiplayer works just fine. So why am I going through another app to invite people to play the game? It's just like, See, like I'm fine if I bought it on Bethesda Net. Yeah, it just works use... less good now than it used to. <laughs> but... Yeah, but <laughs> see, I, I uh, now I'm catching myself just buying the games off the launchers that they belong to. Just because it just saves that hassle of trying to connect with Steam. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I, I bought Division 2 through Ubisoft's launcher. I think I have all my Bethesda games on my computer are through ba Bethesda's net or whatever. So, yeah, uh, I just like I think Steam's great, but that weird like, like have to sign in. <laughs> I know Matt has that issue with uh, Siege, and I have Siege on Steam, yeah. and I don't have a problem with Uplay for some reason, but Matt does, and every time we've tried to play Siege... I have to launch it on on Steam, then on Uplay, and then on Steam again before yeah. it works. See, and I just do the one... I just launched on Steam, and it works, so I don't know what the issue is you have there, but it's just... That's just redundancy that doesn't need to be there, so yeah. in, in my opinion. I mean... I get uh, having... Yeah. They shouldn't be a launcher, in like, per se. I think they should just be, like... Uh, just a, its own entity that like tracks your stats, but the launcher could be through Steam or whatever you buy it through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just annoying. It's, That's just my my gripe. Uh, I'm I'm totally not against multiple launchers. I think it's fine. Um, I think any competition against Steam is a good well, thing. Well, and I agree with you there. Yeah. But the problem is these um, other launchers compared to Steam, especially some aspects of Steam, just bad. Bad. I mean, like uh, like Epic's Epic's fine. I have several games through Epic, and the problem is Epic just doesn't have the community, the multiplayer aspect that Steam does have. And yeah. Yeah. And like the like game the game reviews and curator reviews and like friend recommendation games and stuff. And, and the porn games. That's not even where I was getting, but sure the porn games. <laughs> Steam. Is I love to, as you're saying this, Matt's just getting that head nod. It's so great. I mean, Steam's turned into a cesspool of porn games, like as of late. But you know what? You Who can doesn't love you can a good hentai can, visual novel. You can recommend the good porn game to your friends and you know put a it's review true. out there and you can't do that anywhere else. So that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> and so I don't know. I just I I mean I'm gonna have to deal with the launcher things. I'm gonna be buying yeah. like like Borderlands three, I'm gonna be buying it on a release on Epic. So Yeah. Gonna yeah. have to yeah. gonna, gonna have to deal. I, It'll be fine. I haven't had an issue with Epic at all so yeah, I don't have any problem with Minus all the different the fact launchers. That Fortnite's just stuck in my launcher and I can't get rid of it. I don't mind all the different launchers. I just hate how they're just like, all right, you bought it on this launcher. Now use mine. It's yeah. just like, no, stop. totally. <laughs> no, I mean, if, I'm, you, if you want it, if you want it that way, then be confident enough in your game to just release it on yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's my mini rant about launchers. Competition's fine, because <laughs> um, I think Steam needs to be uh, wrangled down a little bit because it's gotten a little out of control. But yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, and it's nice to see places like Epic that are treating the developers a little, a little better. Better. I mean, obviously, they're getting more money out of it on, yeah. on Epic and stuff. But there's just aspects that, like especially Epic, needs to do if they really yeah. want to be in serious contention with Steam. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Um, so I've got one more news story to hit um, before we're done. Um, Just and don't that hit it with the cat. <laughs> the story of Alinity Divine, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, mm -hmm. um, who is a streamer who got in a bunch of hot water um, over the past couple weeks because during one of her live streams, um, she threw her cat. 
okay. So she didn't like. Okay, so you didn't she didn't like, like Gronk like, spike <laughs> touchdown. Good. My head's like came off. Right. Like so she didn't she, like just smash the cat to the ground. She so just I, javelin uh, through her. Right. It's, it's something Jason's <laughs> done with his cats a million times. Yeah, I always didn't just it, take didn't my it, cats just, out and didn't just didn't video. Throw. Well, didn't it run across her keyboard and she kind of just like... It ran across the keyboard, so she picked it up and just kind of threw it over her shoulder. Yeah, which I've um, done with a cat. Never. But I not mean, on video. It's true. Yeah, but no. the cat's fine. Cats are fine. They land on their feet. The cat was like, wee, probably. You know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's like... I like I am totally like on the border of the story because it's like, yeah, she probably shouldn't be throwing her cat, but also mm. like, it, I'm sure it wasn't hurt. Yeah, you know, it was a cat. I'm kind um, of at the stage where like, you shouldn't have done that, but this should not be the main focus. Well, of now like the SPCA is coming in right and now. like trying to take her cat away from her, and it's like this has gone way too far. Now the 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 other part of that is soon as Sarah McLaughlin's start- gonna be flying in there and you know <laughs> in the arms of the angel and we're gonna have a you know a, a vigil for this poor cat that's still alive and probably fine and there's gonna be a special so- fundraiser for div- divine cat and then you know it's gonna just be a whole thing. Sorry. Relax. So uh, <laughs> my second the, wind the is other, kicking in. <laughs> yes, the other part to this is that she, I guess she has a history of where she was drunk on stream one night and drinking vodka and let the cat lick the vodka out of her mouth. That's um, not. Good. And alcohol is not good for cats. Um, it's not good for people you, either, but we still drink it. Well, that's true. But, but it's I guess, probably much worse for a cat. <laughs> probably. Just saying. And she, she like, f- I haven't seen the video personally, um, but from what I have heard is that, like, the cat looked, like, visibly distraught by the whole thing because it was drinking a bad substance, right? Yeah. Um, and so that also kind of fueled this flame. Um, and so now, you know, then PETA got involved. And then, like you said, like protective services got involved. Um, and regardless of your opinion on this, do not find her and go to her house. Oh, no. Um, people are doing this. That's right? ridiculous. Um, people are finding out where she just lives and like goes to their neighbor looking for her and all this stuff um and that's bad yes yeah no don't do that um that's what drives me crazy about like twitch communities and stuff and i'll have something i i just want to add something after this so gamers. once we're done with this yeah it just it pisses me off like you have the whole swatting culture you have oh that's who, awful yeah uh, it's so messed up and matt finish what you're saying i have something i'll add afterwards but Go ahead. Um, I, I think that was kind of the crux of it. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, she did all this. She got in trouble. Um, and I don't think Twitch ever banned her. Um, well, good thing she didn't film the cat in the bathroom because that has been the last straw. So, well, and here's 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 another part of this um, that maybe is a little um, conspiracy but she also happens to be the streamer that got in a public fight with PewDiePie because PewDiePie called her a thought Mm. Um, and so the conspiracy theory here is um that these people that are like trying to track her down are just PewDiePie fans. That uh, it literally she she could do nothing wrong and the same kind of outcome is going to happen to her just because of the weird following that people have for him. Yeah. I haven't heard that, but I yeah, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, there's a weird apparently she had there. come out and kind of like called him out about using those terms against women uh, and stuff. And so, of course, she got doxxed for it. Yeah, um, because don't throw your cats, don't throw your children. 
stop drinking vodka for God's sakes and Hi- don't hunt down people you don't like on the internet. Hide your right, kids, yeah. Jason. Hide your wives. Okay. Hide your husbands. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just going to talk about it this because this is actually pretty recent news too. I forgot to put it in here, um, it, and it goes along with this. It's the Twitch culture they have right now. Um, Jane, he was a pretty big. He's a pretty big streamer for Overwatch. He does educational content. He was one of the few people who I legitimately subbed to because I loved watching his stuff. Like. He was a smart dude and he was really entertaining. So I was like, yeah, you can have five dollars a month. I, I love your stuff. And so he recently came out, put on this big t- post on Twitter that he was leaving social media, Twitch, Twitter, all that stuff. And he goes on to explain why. And he, it's first of all, I, I guess he dealt with depression and that's never good. And he's talking about how he when he finally got that first time where someone just messages him go kill yourself it just completely shook him to the core and it kind of has been building he's kind of lashed out at people kind of with all the anxiety all the stress that this is causing him and i guess uh in the end he just decided he needed to take a step back from it all and it's just like it always this is my own thing but it pisses me off to see people who sit there and like think that sort of thing is okay well, it's, sit there it's and just, like it's harass just the someone. culture we've just kind of evolved into where you can hide behind its username and say yeah. whatever you want without any real repercussions. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it just it just goes to show that like, you know, I kind of am starting to believe that people deep down aren't good. <laughs> Cause, I don't I mean, think that th- I don't was, agree with that. I think was, that there's just well, it was a like, lot of shitty people who are very vocal. I think so, but like this goes back to the dilemma. I talked about this in uh, one of my classes. Is like if you had the ring of power, where you know if you put it on, you turn invisible. Would you do good things or would you do bad things? Uh-huh. And I think I think the majority of the people said they would probably do bad things because there was no repercussions to the thing. So, and I, cause I think it comes down, I mean, we talked, like, this is like a whole thing I, we can get into, we don't, we're not going to, but, right. you know, are people born good or are they born bad? And right. I just think, obviously, I think there's a lot that goes into fact, environmental factors, the way you're raised and stuff like that. But right. just knowing that you won't get in trouble for something, it kind of, it kind of gives you this like armor, yeah. this false sense of, um, yeah being invincible really which is uh, very unfortunate because i do believe there's a lot of good out there i believe i mean i i, I still believe people are inherently yeah. good because i think most people will op- hold the door open for someone or yeah. you know you see someone on the side of the street that needs help you know, might toss them a water or give them some change or something like that but it just i don't know there's just this world i think it might just be a, a small population but they're yeah. just so loud that's well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, there are those people who, given the choice, they would do bad things. But at the same time, like, I love this meme that's been circulating recently. It's about video games, actually, where someone posts in a video game where there are absolutely no reper- repercussions. Why do you still play the good guy? And the first response is because doing good things makes me feel good. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's, and that's, that's, that's I don't where think I'm that's at. a yeah. I don't think that's exactly like what you're saying, but at the same time, like it is kind of representative of how someone would well, it's, behave it's to self, a certain it's extent. It's self-rewarding to yourself because, you know, if you believe that you do like and that's what you got to keep in mind. Maybe these these people that do post these things, they probably hate themselves just as much or even more yeah. than the person they're lashing out at to. Yeah. Maybe that's the deep down thing is they're the ones that actually need help and they're just lashing right. out at other people and just spreading their their. Uh, I don't want to call it sickness or anything like that, but toxicity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And maybe, I guess maybe it, it's just an underlying, uh, sociological thing at that point. Maybe, I don't know. It's big. Yeah. I think it's bigger than, like I said earlier, hiding behind a screen name and just posting whatever. So it, I guess it's just a, it's a big deal to me because I sit there and like, I've dealt with anxiety all my life and to see like, I, I stream every once in a while and I stream for you guys. And like, I'm terrified to even put that on my po- on my page because like, I'm scared of what people think. So I it 
drives me crazy that there's these people who just have no sense of you don't know what this guy's going through. You don't know what's going on and you're still going to be like, you should go kill yourself, even yeah. though that could be the thing that sets someone over the edge, you know, and it just pisses yeah. me off that there's people like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, this got hot and heavy. <laughs> putting yourself out there onto the Internet is inherently a scary thing. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and even though, like, you know, we're a small channel, so like, yeah, like who is really watching our stuff? Right. Pe- um, I mean, but, people that we personally know. And maybe right. and maybe some um, random people here and there, but I don't think we're getting you know we we haven't got any no. hate mail from anyone. So yeah, no, but except for you know Jesse Hill just randomly right. sending messages all the time. <laughs> but there's there is always that possibility. Yeah, right. Um, that somebody can come in and try to like uh, take us out for our like our deepest insecurities or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's always a possibility um and that that is a scary thing about putting yourself out there for the world um but also like i guess again this is coming from somebody who maybe is privileged that hasn't had to deal with it or and is also on a small scale Mm -hmm. um also hiding from it i guess i've just never thought worth it right Mm -hmm. um like I want to do what I do because I really like what I'm doing. Right. Um, and if people don't like that, then uh, sure. As long as you don't try to physically harm me, uh, then that's, you know, yeah, just something I'm going to have to deal with. Um, but that's a really shitty part of, uh, of our culture today. Um, yeah. Uh, and really just, putting yourself out there so Mm -hmm. but i i should say it shouldn't discourage you from that i mean i it sucks and that people have to deal with that but it shouldn't prevent you from doing it because there will be someone out there who really appreciates what you do and you actually might be saving their life Uh, i'm just gonna leave it at that and we should probably (laughs) (laughs) no let's get deeper into this awesome let's go (laughs) so fundamentally Uh, it comes down to the i'm just kidding um (laughs) i've i've got a bible here somewhere i'm kidding (laughs) so certain people matt starts reading bible verses (laughs) certain people are born with genes that give them a propensity to commit i'm just kidding um oh stop it all right throwing my knowledge in there (laughs) I Turn this in a different direction. Jeans. I was born with cargo shorts. <laughs> Can you jump, get, um, get up and give us a little dance in those cargo shorts? I don't want to get doxxed. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think that does it for our news um, and for the yeah. majority of what we have. Yeah, um, I think that wraps it up. Deep thoughts um, with the Dry Spell Radio. Deep thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, upcoming. Um, Digging deep. August 2nd, which is just a couple days away. It's the start. This is the beginning of the end of 2019. It's not even it's it's not even anymore. Um, Madden's coming out. And, you know, for a long time, Madden like civilized the start of the season. Um, but with like digital platforms and stuff like it, it doesn't even matter anymore. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. at least your game whenever you fucking want. Pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, the big the big companies will still follow, like do their normal thing, because this year yeah, they still do their holiday releases. But this and stuff. this yeah. year, the October, November and even September is going to be a overload of games. More so, I think I've been in the last years. Yeah. We'll see. I keep saying that. I think we'll find actually, out. <laughs> actually, I think the overflow is going to be next you say that spring. Every year. Every year. Broke October. Where's my wallet? Yeah. Take my money. So yeah, so we've got Madden coming out. Um a few days later, August sixth, we have Metal Wolf Chaos, which I'm excited for. <laughs> um I am so pumped for that game. Uh the best game with metal in its title. I disagree. Uh, Yikes. August 22nd (laughs) is uh, the fourth episode of Life is Strange 2, which I know Jason and I are a fan of. Um, Yeah. I'm ready to cry some more because why not? Um, I think we need to have a live stream of Austin actually playing through the first game. I'm just saying. 
I'm in. Let's let's we'll like set it. up. We'll sure. do it. We'll, we'll, all, <laughs> we'll all cry together. He can just screen share it for us, so like we can virtually be there. Okay, I can do that. I'm definitely not streaming myself playing <laughs> Life these <is> games. <laughs> Uh, I just, that's actually I that's actually a pretty that. popular thing is uh, streaming life is strange because a lot of people watch for like the reactions of the streamers themselves. It's it's, it's a good reaction a game, but I will ball my eyes. It's out. hard. I know. Like, <laughs> I, there's this one moment I always talk about. It, Matt knows the exact moment where I just sat down and like I didn't want to delete my choice, but I just sat there like hating what happened because yep. it hurts so much. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there, and and that happens multiple uh, times, a number of times <laughs> throughout these games. So um, yeah, I'm super pumped to get back into that. Um, and then August 27th uh, is Vanilla World of Warcraft. Yeah, going back to um, the basics, which I have heard people being interested in. So I'm it's not. it's every, like it's the the MMO right, but they're yeah. re-releasing the original game. Yeah, because a lot of the people who were there at the beginning, they look at what World of Warcraft is right now. And, you know, they have they're the grandpa gamers of World of Warcraft. They're like, back in my day, it took 50 years to get to level 80. And you're like, OK, calm down. Well, I mean, I kind I kind of <laughs> get that for a game that's been around so long where probably so many people have joined the game since it's been at this classic point that mm. they might have missed the magic of what was World of Warcraft. I kind of get yeah. this choice. It's kind of an interesting idea. And no, I agree. So, oh, yeah, totally. So do you start this classic and then it, does it get the stuff that's been added on later or is it just the classic uh, release you know? version of World of Warcraft? That is a good question. Like, do you start and then once you beat it, you actually do get the next expansion or something like that? Or can you get the expansions after? I don't know. I never <laughs> I only played World of Warcraft back in the day when it was like you could play the first 20 levels for free or 10 levels. Yeah. Or whatever it was. And I mean, I got to say MMOs really aren't my thing. I, I've had some fun yeah. with a few uh i wasn't enough for me for me to like pay money a month for uh i mean it's and obviously it depends on who you're playing with um you need right. you need pretty dedicated people to be playing mmos with so and the people i was playing kind of fell off the wagon for a little bit but you know i did uh reinstall eso recently on uh, my computer here so I i'm thought about it i'm set back a little bit from where i got to on playstation because i originally transferred where I was on computer to PlayStation when they did that release and then everyone's kind of migrated back to PC. And so I'm a little far back to where I was at one point. So I'm debating if I actually do want to play it, but at the options there. So yeah, it is there. I've been enjoying Final Fantasy 14. So See, and I, I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of right really want to, like I would have bought that. Cause I know you because uh -huh. I would have bought it right because it but like didn't it come out like right when ESO came out or like right uh, around? it w didn't it was out before that but it didn't get popular. I, what happened is you were you were thinking about buying that at the same time I was playing uh, Final Fantasy 14 yeah. and then everyone started playing ESO so you're like I guess I'll do it well because I was already always planning on getting ESO and I was actually originally waiting for it to come to PS4 because I knew it was and uh -huh. then I think I got convinced to buy it on my yeah. uh, my MacBook back in the day that's originally what right. I played it on <laughs> <laughs> but hey just saying always can go to Final Fantasy 14 it's true uh, I'll, I'll up my subscription see I bet I was like I would probably do it and I'd probably never play which is <laughs> you know. can actually do like the first 20 levels or something for free maybe I'll try it out maybe maybe we'll sit down Sounds one of these good. days Jason and uh, try it out alright well I think I should stop talking I think we're done so we should probably um, shut up yeah we'll probably play some video games yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, but anyways, so uh, if you're out there listening, thank you. Sincerely, thank you. If you're watching, if you made it I don't this know far. where you are. Um, sincerely, <laughs> it's, thank it's you as well. My pretty, my pretty face. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, all of our pretty. You know faces. where to find us: uh, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> YouTube. You're gonna put all of our things down down uh, here. Probably. 
Yeah. Um, but follow all of and us. And then he's going to put it up there. At Dry Spell Radio. On our faces. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep doing this. Um, and yeah, and we will we need be to, we need to be back more consistent, another we will, day. We will get there. <laughs> See you in life, two months. <laughs> life happens. So uh, until next time, uh, find us on social media at Dry Spell Radio, and uh, we uh, we'll do some see stuff. you next time.